All right. Excellent. Great. Good. It's recording. How's that? That's great. It's all good? Yep. Great. So I did my STLB program last year for the second half of last year. And I was with GNS Science based in Whakarewa. They were in Rotorua. And I was the only scientist in the living village. The rest were the tour guides that I worked with. And I had the opportunity to travel to Wellington for GNS or down to Taupo, but it was all up to me what I did on any given day. So I found it particularly useful for developing my initiative and keeping myself busy. Um, one of the benefits of my placement I had was that I was able to free up some time towards the end and go into school and regularly and start developing the or started on the review early. So instead of having to do the review when I returned to school this year, I already had it done last year. Um, you can see on, my, on the screen at the moment, there's a link to one of my class blog sites. So our year sevens are running, each year seven class is running a blog site. So if you had a look there, you'll see all the photos of what we've been up to. And we've got some more. This here is sort of the background to our school. It goes from year seven up to year 13, and all of the junior science programs have been and developed by senior science specialists. And there's, they've usually had six to eight topics a year and a two-hour exam at the end. Um, they've endeavored to cover all of the exemplar content from the contextual strands and valued that over the nature of science strand. A lot of, a lot of us thought that the nature of science strand had something to do with nature. Very noisy, Michael. Someone seems to have a, a microphone on or there's some feedback. So could you all please check your microphones off? Is it better? We'd be better, yeah. That's better. All right, um, so we were using a lot of practical activities, but we were mainly just using them like cooking recipes where we would get the kids to follow instructions or copy out the instructions and complete the task and, and trying to help them remember it better rather than any solving any mystery or finding anything out new for themselves. Um, the topics were also taught out of sync to avoid equipment shortages. So at any given time, you were the only teacher in the school teaching your particular topic. The way it was set up. Um, we, I chose very early on just to focus on changing the year seven program for this year. And that's what I decided to run my review on. The reasons for that was so that I'd have a fresh intake of students that were hopefully as curious as possible. And also so that I only had to convert or work with two other teachers because I, I was trying not to overcommit myself and also handpicked my other two teachers to make sure that they were open-minded and ready for change. And it seems to be working well. I've had to drop senior physics for the first time in my career. And to date, I haven't really missed it. So that's not a problem. Um, we start off the review doing the student engagement survey. So I did all this while I snuck off from GNS Science. I snuck in there and did that review. I got all 160 students through this and it highlighted the things that are in red here. And I use this, the results from this is a, quite a guiding document for what I wanted to include in this year's science program. Um, so we're, we're doing different ways of investigating, not just sticking to fair testing. We're encouraging students to think about how they can improve our investigation. So whenever we finish an investigation, we're always evaluating it and working out its limitations and also thinking about how we can believe our results, whether they're, um, how reliable they are. So we're spending, we're setting aside time to do that, whereas in the past it was um, trying to get one experiment into a one hour slot and trying to get things moving as fast as possible. Um, we were exploring and explaining our ideas with models as one of our weaknesses. We hadn't, I hadn't really considered that to evaluate um, models. Um, we've made a big effort on classroom discussions. However, that's still ongoing, ongoing challenge for, for me in particular. 
is getting the children to discuss things effectively and getting them to um, understand and explain their ideas to others. All right, when I went to, I also carried out individual reviews or in, um, interviews with students and I got six engaged students and 12 disengaged students from the six classes and we did it as a blind test so I didn't know which ones were which to try and find out what the students were thinking with their current program. So this is with the old year seven program and found that half of the dis disengaged students did not find the topics enjoyable and that was one of the reasons or one of the things they didn't like about science was the types of topics. Um, a significant number also complained that there was too much writing to be done. And probably the big concern came when I studied the overall marks for the year. So they get a, everyone gets put on the 100 sheet and it became obvious that the Māori students were underachieving. So they were 10% lower than the non-Māori students. And because we got 33 of them out of the 160, it was a um, very, very significant group. So made some changes to try and combat that. Um, we reviewed the parents using um, Survey Monkey. So we did this at the, while we were down in Wellington, actually on the last day, your, your heads of faculties come down. So my head of faculty and I designed the survey there in Wellington and emailed it to all of the new intake of students. So they were currently year six students going to other schools, but they had already enrolled in our school. We got hold of that email list sent out the questionnaire which covered a whole range of different aspects to do with the science program and within two days we had 80 responses. So we were able to get a really good picture of what the parents wanted. They were keen on homework and they were very keen to have it checked by teachers. They saw practical activities as being valuable and not just in class but also in assessments and they only wanted four assessments a year so we and didn't value the two-hour exams at all so that um, came as quite a surprise to us. Um, also surveyed the teachers in the school, so we got 13 teachers. Hardly any of them had been to the Science Capabilities website or knew anything about the capabilities. They were keen to do more PD around specifically around science. We did a lot of PD at school but not specifically science PD. We unanimously express our oh, teachers um, had difficulties with running classroom discussions. And they also found, also highlighted that they would like to interact more with their colleagues in regard to lesson planning and pedagogy, which is something we had not really been doing. Um, one of the areas that I had concerns about was the feeling of being rushed and trying to constantly get through the content in order to get it ready for um, assessments and so there was only 36 percent of our teachers thought that they had plenty of time to teach the best way they could. Um, so my first change was aligning the topics so instead of so that for term one all three teachers there we all taught the same work down by the stream there's a photo of us some of the kids working down by the stream we also allowed us to start doing cross-curricular with the English faculty. So English had traditionally um, taught with no context at all. So they've always been scratching to get a context at our school. I've got their set of skills, but nothing to apply it to. So they are absolutely delighted to be working with our science department now. Um, and it's also been, by having a teachers so the three of us teaching the same topic at the same time we can just over the course of the day we always just check in with each other and we're able to can talk about um, what just different what we've been doing in the lesson what things are working well what things are not working and we're just constantly improving on the activities that we're doing and we've also decreased it only one assessment per term so that it's not always on our minds trying to get the kids ready for a test we think that that one assessment will give them, will give us enough data for what we need. Um, we've removed co some content, well, a significant amount of content, which has allowed us to go into more depth into areas that interest the students, rather than rushing. Or, for example, if a student is curious about 
some particular type of weed, we don't have to say, well, that's not, that's not in the test. We just got to carry on. We can, we can spend that time with the child because we know that we're not in a rush. Um, we've gone for contextual topics. So we used to do chemistry, physics, biology, earth and space science topics. So we've gone to um, contextual topics. So our first term was school stream. Then we've done mechanical engineering last term and we're doing food and teeth at present. Um, we have introduced quite a bit of IT. Um, at the moment we're using Google Drive to share with, so we can work with all 180 students simultaneously, I can communicate with them. So the three of us teachers have put out videos of ourselves um, presenting or doing experiments and the kids uh, can log on, access those whenever they want. We've also got student instruction sheets that go with each video, so the students can um, start taking responsibility for themselves and working independently. So they watch the video to work out what to do, and then they, need, they can write up a full scientific report going through all of the steps at their own pace. It's been probably my first bit of differentiated learning where I've been able to, the, kid, um, the kids that are doing really well and making good progress, I've been able to have time to give them extra activities to do, which are very valuable. For example, instead of just doing one um, measurement, I've been able to take two or three and start taking averages, starting to go into a lot more detail into the investigations. Each, um, oh, in each lesson, students are given, one student's given a school device and they get to document the lesson, mainly through photos of what they've done in class. And that gets posted at the end of the lesson onto a blog site. And so that's allowing students who are absent to keep up with class and, or slower workers to go home and catch up in their own time and anything I've finished. Um, all of the written work that they do in class or any drawings or worksheets is all just take, take a photo, put it on the blog site. So it's really only for the student who gets allocated the device for that lesson. It really only takes up a few minutes of their time and it's developed a um, very valuable record of what we've done this year. So that link open to the public if anyone wants to have a look and um, also to one big variation was homework there was some teachers gave no homework some teachers did a lot so we've tightened that up I've made the homework books so we've got six to seven activities per term and we're using a mix of online um, practical and puzzle based activities and every homework is getting checked and I'm currently getting 90% completion rate for my 90 students, which is miles better than I've ever had in the past. And the parents are very happy. They know that when the homework's due, they can track it. Um, we can have a spare copy of the homework book. It's put in that shared file, um, Google Drive folder that we've got, so they can always access that. If they lose theirs, um, or if they say they've lost theirs, I, um, I've also got another project on the side going, which is I got one student from each year seven class to enter into the Transpower Neighborhood Engineers Award. And they're going through the full engineering process to design and install a rubbish trap for our school water drain. So currently the school's near the stream that we worked on turn one. And all of our school drains just feed straight into the stream via underground pipes. So we're putting a little trap at the opening as it enters. Um, so every couple of weeks we've got an engineer coming to school and I'm meeting with that group of six students fairly regularly to keep them on track. And that'll be finished up and gets judged in a couple of months. So we're going to get close to that. And um, professional development. So, so far I've really only been working with uh, two other year seven teachers at school. Um, but we've I'll be doing, running some 30 minute PD courses in the next couple of weeks with all of the science teachers around the science capabilities. Um, we've also got three teachers from our school doing a two day workshop on science capabilities, which is run by the Waikato Bakenti Primary Science Advisor. Um, so she's got the Ministry of Education contract to um, deliver the science capabilities PD. So that was something I just worked out probably three months ago. So it might be something you might want to look at when you go back to um, go back to your schools, that there is science capabilities PD out there. Um, it's just a matter of getting people to go along and finding out who's delivering it. And it's all free. 
Um, also do quite a bit of team teaching with the other year seven science teachers. So we are in and out of each other's classes and um, just working quite closely in regard to what we're doing in our classes, which has been made teaching a lot less isolated than what it used to be, a lot more enjoyable. Um, and yeah, we just regular discussions about our teaching strategies, which um, previously has never really happened. Um, our future for what we've got planned is to repeat the same review that I did for the 2015 Year 7 cohort. So I'm going to do it at the end of this year and we'll use that evidence to fine tune this year's program and get more teachers on board with science capabilities for next year. And I'm aiming to rewrite the Year 8 program for 2017 if timetabling allows. And I think that is the end. Is anybody there? That's brilliant. Thank you very much indeed. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm really impressed by that. I think that was that was that was really neat, and I, I like the way that you um, integrate all of these different things using Google Drive and and uh, doing cross curricular stuff with the English department. Um, and it looks to me, I, I imagine that what you're doing is you're sort of rolling this out progressively throughout the school, or well, that's the intention. Um, yep. Anyway, enough, enough from me. Let's throw it open to other people to ask questions. But would you like to stop sharing your screen so that we can just see the, um, who, who's there? Okay, thank you. So who would like to kick off the questions? Remember, remember to unmute your um, microphone when you want to ask a question. Yeah, hi, Paul Gareth here. I'm just wondering about how much time you're actually spending teaching in um, the classroom per week and how much time do you dedicate to supporting other teachers and developing your programs and things like that? What's, what's the balance? How much release time do you get per week? Um, I did... I worked closely with Jen at the end of last year, so I managed to get my um, allowance, my teaching release time all teed up before I started teaching this year, so it was put into my timetable. So currently the Royal Society are paying, paying for two lessons, two and a half lessons a week for me to be released. Um, and I've got three year seven classes, so therefore I'm planning for three hours of teaching each week. And those three hours of teaching are also getting the preparation I do are getting used by the other two year seven teachers as well. Does that answer your question, Gareth? Yeah, so only, only three hours of teaching a week, the rest of the time planning and, and helping the, the rest of the staff. Is that right? Um, oh, I do nine hours of teaching because I've got three classes and they do three times a week. So I have nine hours of teaching. Right. And I'm also working for a community of schools, so I'm working at eight other Catholic schools around the Bay of Plenty. Are uh, you doing the coal program with science as the focus? Um, I'm the science coordinator for the Catholic Community of Learning. Right. I took, I took that job on at the start of term two. So that takes up two days a week for me. So okay. You're, you're a busy guy. Uh, my timetable's pretty different. Okay, thanks, Paul. That's good. More questions. Who's next? Okay, let's move on then. Thanks a lot, Paul. Um, Carolyn, are you still there? I am still here. Would you like to share your screen and um, share your wisdom, please? Oh, we'll see how we go. Cool. Mm. Yep, it's coming. Has that come up so that it's... Yeah, that's come up. So you need to go to your How? slideshow, I guess. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. Ah, there we go. Yeah, right. Okay, over to you. Okay, so um, some basic context. I teach at Hagley Community College in Christchurch. Mm -hmm. um, we're a really unusual school in that we have a... An enormous role um, of probably nearly 1,500 students, um, but we've only got four classes of year nine and four classes of year 10. 
so we're really top heavy. Um, we take we have adult students and all sorts of things, so rather an unusual context. Um, when I went back in the mid year last year, I was going back into a department that had five new staff that hadn't been there when I'd left the, at the end of the year before. Uh, we were also going into massive changes in our senior management with the resignation of five different people um, from the senior leadership team. So we had some enormous changes happening through the end of last year and the start of this year. Um, but one of the good things about that was the school itself was trying very hard to make changes and to do some things that were different. So I was coming back to quite a good opportunity in that. Um, so what we've been doing uh, with, I forgot to remember to change my slide. Um, sorry, my school is a really unusual one. We're a really big mix of new and old. So those two pictures are actually of the two of uh, the big buildings, um, their main block, which is we're the second oldest school in Christchurch, but we're also very progressive and quite new in different ways. Um, we were having an all, enormous amount of surveying of students going on at the end of last year. Um, they were in the process of doing the Me and My School survey. Uh, there was the senior management were trying to find out what was going on with students and all sorts of things and doing all those surveys. So a lot of the stuff that I'd had planned do I didn't end up doing because of the um, the over surveying of students and um, parents and staff and things like that so I started to just uh, start conversations with people instead um, but what I did do was the science engagement survey so that was really interesting to do to get some information about how things were going so um, what I started off with was obviously just the engagement survey and that was my place to work out um, what was going on. Hang on a second. Um, sorry, just ignore the phone in the background. Um, so I started to look at um, how our students uh, were going and what they were doing. And as a department, we discussed the results and we realized pretty quickly that we we're going to need to make some changes, but we'd already knew that. Um, and we decided that the capabilities were going to be the best way to make those changes. One of the, so some of the results we'd got from the um, survey, the engagement survey was that basically they thought science was okay-ish, but that was about the best they got. They never really got any option of choosing to do what they wanted. Um, and they didn't really find, this was a big thing for us, that what they were learning was gonna be useful in their life. Um, and they weren't really um, encouraged to think about what they were doing. So we were already teaching in a way that was contextual in essence, but wasn't very good and we didn't really think was very relevant to the students. So we definitely really wanted to make some changes. Um, so what I started to do was to make just some small changes to start with. Um, I spoke to all the staff, I'm not the HOD, so obviously I had to talk to the HOD first, get her to decide that whether or not she liked what I was doing. Um, that whole idea of inspiring shared vision is quite key for that, um, making her think it was her idea or she wanted to do it. Um, so I got to, I worked pretty closely with her in working on that. Um, and just started to make some small changes constantly and things I was doing in the conversations that I was having with the other teachers. Because we only have uh, four, year, four classes of year nine and four classes of year 10, we only have six of us who actually teach juniors. So I worked closely with those people, but at the same time kept working with everybody else on the same ideas so that we're all sort of singing from the same song sheet, so to speak. Um, one of the things that we did was these posters that are in the picture um, here. Oh, look, I can draw things. It's exciting. So these posters, um, they were this one, ones that were actually given to me by someone from another school um, in Ashburton, I think. They're actually given to me by someone from another school, but they got them from someone from Ashburton, as you can imagine. The, um, those are now up around the department and all in every classroom. And we also started to do, change some of the ways we looked at um, what we were doing. And the conversations that I'm having with staff 
with the other staff all the time is whenever we're talking about someone's um, class that they're teaching is instead of they'll ask me what uh, they'll say oh I'm doing this and I'll say oh well what's your capability focus what are you actually looking at oh we're going to be today we're, we're doing um, circuit diagrams and I'm like oh, okay you looking at teaching them how to do circuit diagrams or are you teaching them how to interpret a representation of saying oh oh and so we start getting this conversation happening quite regularly in the department um, I actually started off by doing some activities with the department um, and doing just little lots of little activities with, as a um, uh, with all the staff on a teacher only day that we had uh, and going through all those um, ideas the Okay. So what I also created with is this capabilities um, question cheat sheet, which is now taped to the desk in every classroom. Um, and the idea was that when they just everyone's just generally having a conversation about an experiment or something that they've done in class, that they'll look at the cheat sheet and go, oh, those are the kinds of questions that I need to be asking or I need to be thinking about when I'm doing um, what I'm doing. The and from my conversations with staff, that's made a big difference to um, them using the capabilities just in the everyday teaching, whether it's with juniors or with seniors, whatever they're doing. Um, so those were some small changes that we made. Uh, they were just some um, little changes in thinking about transferable skills as well, um, where what I've been doing is I've been working with some members of other departments with my year nine class uh, to try and integrate uh, some of the work that we've been doing a little bit more um, and one of the things of big things for me is just modeling that to the other teachers and starting conversations about it to get them into that idea one thing I found with the department was we were actually surprisingly far along when it came to thinking about capabilities um, the and the idea of teaching nature of science, the staff all really wanted to do that. That's what they preferred to do. They just didn't know how. And so we used this as a way of getting them into how to actually do that. Um, one of the other things that when I came back to school, I'd actually acquired myself a new job while I was away and ended up being half of the SCT um, team, the specialist classroom teacher, uh, which meant, gave me, and as uh, two of the teachers of juniors in my department or PRTs gave me a really good excuse for uh, visiting their classes on a regular basis and making doing observations and so one of the things we spoke about a lot was um, the, how to change your teaching so that it would uh, focus more on the nature of science and less on the content because content um, we decided seemed not strictly necessary which seems unusual for secondary school. Um, so, hmm. so I'm trying to go to my next slide and my computer's being extremely slow. There we go. Okay. So those were some little things that I changed, but um, I also made some big changes. I had been asked before I even went um, away to start thinking about rewriting the junior program. We already had this contextual junior program. Um, it was called Update Wicked. Some people might have heard of it. It was um, bought. Uh, it's a one from the UK. It worked for what we needed at the time when we needed to change what we were doing, but it was in the middle of the standards alignment and we were busy dealing with seniors. Um, but in the long run, we just we really didn't like it and we weren't using most of it anyway uh, because it just seemed so irrelevant to our students. So we made some, I was always going to change that and I came back and basically everybody went, oh, where's the new junior program? Let's, um, we must have it right now. And so I spent a bit of time convincing everyone that maybe this was going to take a while and that uh, it wouldn't be an overnight thing. Uh, so I started at uh, the end of last year, doing all my surveying and um, talking to parents and things like that and talking to the other staff, but then starting to create and brainstorm ideas for the new program. And I started to write it. Then this year we started teaching the year nines with the new junior program that I'd 
um, written. So with the year nine program, so we just did the year nine this year and next year we'll move into year 10. So one of the um, things that I did was I also went back to a school that had just started using Office 365, which I had to learn how to use very rapidly. Um, because I having missed all the PD on it while I was away. <laughs> that I made my new program in OneNote, so this is just an image of it, of part of the thing, and it looks very much like a fairly traditional unit scheme, but what I've done is started with, uh, the advantage, sorry, is that it's collaborative and everyone can edit this in the department, um, and I'm thinking about changing the order of this around so that capability outcomes come first, rather than um, towards the middle. But basically what I have here is some learning outcomes, the activities that they're going to do, some literacy strategies that can be used, or activities, some formative assessment, most of it comes from ARBs. And the focus questions for the particular capability that the topic um, is uh, focusing on. And I put them there, those are the same obviously questions from the TKI stuff and that are on my cheat sheet. Um, and as you can see, my HOD has commented that she quite likes the emphasis in there. And okay, and all the staff, as they use things, that they find things that they like, they can put them in there. And the advantage here is that it means we're not actually all teaching exactly the same content. If we have a, staff, a class who go, oh, I want to do this, I want them interested in this, the teacher can take that and run with it because they'll still be teaching about interpret representations or about whatever it is that that particular topic should be about. And you'll notice that as they go across the page, the idea was that they start close in to us. Um, the next one is supposed to be about the um, where they live, um, sorry, their house, then where we live, or um, the idea of sort of Canterbury, and that would be partly um, about school as well, uh, and the geology of the area, uh, and just moving outwards until we get to the science in our community. I haven't finished yet. This is an example of the other in the house one. So this was about investigating and the, the three capabilities uh, really, because I wanted them to be able to do all three. The introduction was about mostly about gather and interpret data and then moving into doing all three. So we're uh, through. Um, so having this col as collaborative, it was really good. It's been really go gone really well. They have liked using it and found it really easy, which has been good, and everyone has been able to put in the things that, as they do it, it's really easy, you can just drop your activity in there, whatever the document is uh, that you have, which is really useful. Um, although I've noticed that as time has gone on, fewer people are remembering to put things in. Um, the some of the things that we've been trying to do, I'll sort of chuck in some pictures here, some bits and pieces that I've done this year uh, and some of the other staff have done this year. Uh, we had, had science fair for the first time um, and that was really good. That photo in the bottom right hand side, that is a fairly typical morning tea time in the department. Um, two teachers, <laughs> three if you include me, it's standing at the door. So you tend to see themselves set up. We've got an adult student playing his guitar in the corner. Um, fairly average day in our department. But that was really amazing to see how engaged the kids became with the fact that they could do something that they chose to do that was entirely their choice. Uh, and that went really well for us, although that was for the year 10, so I was introducing it for them. Um, one of the other things that I've been doing is obviously working with individual teachers, whether or not they are teaching uh, juniors. And the photo in the top right there is our physics teacher at the Margaret Mayhew playground uh, having a bit of fun when we were talking about how we can use that for our junior classes as well as for her physics class. Uh, so uh, the engagement with from teachers and things like uh, the idea of going on field trips which is something we've never really done before has increased massively and she's now taken a class on two different field trips this year. Um, although hasn't been brave enough to take her year 10s yet. Um, I started using things like cartoons and stuff to teach as well, which is oh, too far. Okay, uh, with my teaching. So that's made it uh, be really interesting. Obviously, that was a 
year 11 genetics one, um, find any my junior ones. Uh, but what I've been getting them to do is make their own about ideas as well. I'm quite keen on the idea of STEAM rather than STEM. Uh, I like to include art related stuff. And you can see that my year nines, uh, when they were making some Play-Doh circuits, they included keep doing that, um, bunnies in their circuits. Um, so the staff reaction to this has been generally really positive. Uh, they wanted big changes. They wanted um, it to be much more flexible. They wanted to, the opportunity to teach what their students were interested in, um, but sticking within the same sort of guidelines so that we were all teaching the same ideas and the same skills, which we found that using the capabilities in the nature of science as a background for that has meant that that is what's happening. So they're able to teach the things that their classes are interested in while um, also um, teaching the same skill as everybody else. One of the big issues we've had, of course, is that as soon as we get tired and stressed, like at the moment when we're trying to write reports, is that we very quickly slip back into teaching content um, because we can't seem to help ourselves. Um, so our next step, uh, year 10. Uh, I'm thinking that it'll be something involving project-based learning, although the thought terrifies me at this stage because I'm not quite sure how to go about it. Um, one of the big changes for me though is that I have spent a lot more time reading and researching about how to do these things and actually going into stuff with a much better uh, understanding of the research involved before I do it, which has been really, really good. So it's a good habit that I've picked up. Everything that we've done has basically been about making sure that things are relevant to the real world. And I think we've succeeded in that quite well. One of the surveys that got done on the students or the students this year was about, uh, well, it was from the, the deans, but it was about this idea that a lot of them said they were bored in class and they started surveying them about what that meant um, and, and how that broke down by each subject. And it turned out in year 10, most of them said they were bored in science. In year nine, we had one student who said they were bored in science across the whole school. So we think that we've made some improvements to what we're doing. Um, I thought I would end with a wee bit of uh, reflection on <laughs> some mistakes that I've made. <laughs> one of the big things is I made a great plan. It was an amazing plan. Unfortunately, I didn't follow it very well. Uh, I wish I had followed it a lot more closely and I'd done some more of the things that I had thought that I was I should have done. Um, I've I took on way too much. Going back for the department that I didn't know very well because we had five new staff, um, all these changes in the school, I had to role in, as the CT, so I was learning how to do that. Um, then for some unknown reason this year I thought it was a good idea to enroll in a master's paper. So I took on that as well while uh, doing some other things uh, with cadet forces that was not a good plan. Um, doing a whole lot of too much basically uh, and it's meant that nothing has been done quite as well as I would have liked it to have been done. So if I were to do it again I would focus a lot more on getting things done a lot better. Uh, the other thing is you communicate your idea really clearly and so that people understand it because it makes a really big difference if um, very early on I did manage to communicate really well to the staff other staff and that meant that from the start they understood what I was trying to achieve and were really keen on that happening not sure that it happened but we're still working on that okay I think that will do for me Thank you very much. Another wonderful presentation. That's great. And uh, yeah, it sounds like you're a bit of a sucker for punishment. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I really, I really like some of the things that you talked about. Like, like um, that thing about um, what did you call it? Uh, inspiring shared vision. Um, ah, yes. to get people That's on side. That's from the book. It. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so. Um, so well done, I, I, um, throw it open for questions. Would you like to stop sharing your screen? I'm trying um, to. Yeah, great, that's go. good. So uh, open for questions to Carolyn, please.
don't forget to unmute your microphone if you want to ask her a question. Don't ask all at once. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Carolyn, I must put you in touch with um, Paul Lowe, who's a friend of mine, who um, w won the Science Teacher of the Year Award a few years ago. Yeah. Because his, a lot of his work has been with um, project-based learning in science. Oh, wow. Okay. And he's, he's now back. He's been, he's been abroad sort of doing um, teaching in um, the Gulf states, but he's, he's now come back. And oh, he, he presented one of the webinars, didn't he? Yes, he did. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Questions, guys. Carolyn, I'm going to ask you a question, if that's all right. It's Jen it, here, and I, I can't help myself. Is it so. going to be, are you going to even reply to my email? Uh, yeah, it could Was be it? that, but yeah. no. I'm I will one day. Ask you, what is the thing you're most proud of about the work you've done? Oh. Um. It's a bit hard to explain, but the fact that whenever my year nine class leave my room, they all say thank you, and they're all very happy and smiley and excited. So it's a lot of things, but it's the thing that made that happen. That's so wonderful. That's, that's great. That's interesting. So that engagement stuff's really changed. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hi, Carolyn. It's um, Anthony here. Uh, this is a question for you and Paul, I suppose. Um, what's been the biggest challenge for both of you guys heading back to school in phase two? Um, my biggest challenge was a personality clash between me and my HOD. Um, and finding it quite difficult to do what I wanted. The other big challenge was, which, which I've mostly overcome by just making sure she understands what I'm trying to do. Uh, the, my other big challenge was actually just <laughs> finding time to do some things that I wanted to do. I have all these wonderful ideas um, and most of them never come to fruition. <laughs> So did all the leadership thing help you, that the leadership program you did, we did, help with, um, like, thank you for, I suppose, first, thanks for being honest about <laughs> the, the, the leadership thing. And we're, you know, that's something, thinking ahead, that we're probably all going to deal with people who, um, for different reasons, aren't as keen to come on board so from the leadership thing what helped you the most do you think in terms of being able to work through that um okay with the the leadership course was amazing and helped me a lot uh, i got a lot out of it uh, i've done quite a lot of other leadership stuff before but i found this was much more useful for the kind of thing that i was going to be doing yeah. Um, I think understanding why we have conflict was a big thing for, for me and that helped me get work out how to deal with it. Um, however, I will admit that when I'm tired and grumpy, <laughs> then all my ability to deal with it goes out the window rather rapidly. And so we've had moments which, where things haven't gone well that I haven't dealt with well. Uh, but it, the good thing is it gives you something to, uh, somewhere to start and so we a way to think about what's going on. Um, and so, for example, when I was talking about that Inspire Shared Vision thing, gave me something to uh, work from. Yeah. Cool. cool, thank you. I admire your honesty, Carolyn. <laughs> so do I. I can't be anything other than honest. <laughs> Should we throw it over? Anybody got any questions for Paul as well? Yeah, this is, hi, this is Tina. Um, I've got a question for Paul and Carolyn. Um, would, do you guys have any advice about what would be sort of a priority to focus on when we get back to school next year? I'm sure there'll be lots of things coming at us. Is there sort of 
some advice as you say, you know, don't pay attention to that right now. Focus on this. Um, my advice would be to focus on something small and achievable um, and just get your own teaching sorted before you start trying to um, stretch yourself or try and change any others. It's probably what I've gone for. So my, a lot of my battles are yet to come because I've only really tried to change two teachers so far and they were the two easy ones. So, right. um, yeah, so once I've got them on side, then there'll be three of us to try and work on the rest of the department next year. And I think that's made it very manageable for what I've done. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I'd have to agree with that. The small steps are pretty key. Um, the, sorry, all this leadership reading. John Cotter, generate small wins. Very big thing. Definitely uh, try and do what you can, get the wins where you can. Um, but in the meantime, enjoy your time when you're not at school. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. I think that's generally true anyway, isn't it? You, you, to uh, realize that um, you've got a whole life to lead and, and you, you need to have work-life balance and otherwise you go nuts. So easy to do if you're teaching and you've got a really heavy teaching load and other stresses. Anybody else? It's me again. Um, just what Michael was talking about, about the heavy um, teaching load and stuff like that. Did you, were you able to, like, that's one thing I've noticed is how do we get back to work and um, teaching and work towards changing the culture within your school or whatever so that we can try and find balance as a group, did you try, like, have you tried to bring that up with anyone or anything like that? Does, does that make sense? I suppose as far as my timetable goes, I've been particularly blessed. Although I did choose <laughs> to have three classes that are the same, whereas no one else has ever wanted to do that before in our school. Um, had three of a kind, um, which has been, for me, it's been absolutely awesome. I just do one, I design a lesson, I spend, I can justify spending an hour or two designing the lessons, I teach it once, modify it, teach it again, modify it, hopefully nail it on a third go, and then give it off to the other two teachers to do. So um, for me, it hasn't really, I haven't had any time problems, um, but I know that it won't be the case for many other people have been lucky. Carolyn, did you want to add to that? Yeah, I was just thinking about it. I was thinking, um, uh, I've, I've been lucky because obviously I had uh, the SCT roles, which gave me a, a good opportunity to go and talk to people and see them in class. Um, so that we had hours for that, and that was quite that's been quite helpful. Um, and I've had some extra hours because of um, having a <laughs> scholarship for my study for my master's paper. Um, but one of the things that I've really struggled to do is actually use the time that I should be uh, I should have for um, for doing this because I only have three classes. It's been really difficult to take time out of school to get things sorted and to go and talk to people and sort and do stuff because I don't want to give up the hours that I have with my classes um, mm. which has been yeah so I've struggled to do that which has been a bit of a challenge mm. um, I'm not sure I've answered your question about changing culture though that's a, a challenging thing to do okay thanks I suppose with my other two teachers that I work with, they have done absolutely no preparation at all this year. So I've done everything for them. So I think I've saved their workload by a huge amount compared to what they would have done. So as far as our year seven teachers little group goes, we're all very happy and it's worked very well for us. So if we can use that model next year for year eights, it'll be 
and it'd be very good to just build it up. Mm. Okay. Are we there then? Is there anybody who else who wants to share anything or? Well, it's about, uh, let me see, 8.54, for, yeah, five to nine. Um, I think we've come to a really good conclusion. I'd really like to thank um, both of you, Paul and Carolyn, uh, for your presentation. It's been really great. What I normally do after these sessions is that I normally um, ring up the presenters, um, phone them up and say thank you very much for a great job. But unfortunately, I haven't got either of your, um, you guys' numbers to hand. So I'll have to do it now. Thank you so much for um, your contribution. You've made it a really successful evening. And thank you, everybody else, for um, turning up. Um, and um, yeah, it seems to have worked quite well on this new platform. So um, yeah, um, thanks a lot. And good night. I'll turn the meeting off in about uh, two or three minutes just for people to say goodbye. Um, and that's it from me. Thank you. Good night. Thanks for listening. Yeah, thanks for listening. You're welcome. Uh, I, just, you. I was just going to quickly ask, are these presentations going to be um, in our Dropbox? What I'm going to do is I'm going to um, get the recording and then I will um, stick it on. We, we have a YouTube channel that we uh, that I put them on. Oh, um, cool! Yeah. And so I'll share oh, I'll share the link to that. Okay. Someone needs to mute their microphone. That's better. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night.